Yeah.
down to the bottom. So I need somebody out there to see if they can magically find uh, the most important occurrence. And I'm going to pick on you. You can stay right there. You don't even have to get up. All you have to do is tell me which one you think it is. You think it's right here or down here or down there or further down? I'll move the uh, scissors all the way down and you just tell me where to stop, wherever you think the most important one is. Can you say stop? Right there? Okay. Just cut that right off. There it is. Could you pick that up? If you pick that up, you can just read that first one, the one right there where you stop me, as the most important occurrence. Can you read it out nice and loud for everybody? Help, help is needed to replace the what? The worn rope? Oh, it's that on the church. Oh, the church rope rope. Let me just check. I'll check the posted banner and see what... Look, you were exactly right. Help is needed to replace the worn rope on the church bell. She got it exactly right. You can keep that for a little souvenir, okay? Ah, Wesley, you want to get up? I think he got wet, right? Man, he's, a, he's a little soaked. So I'll tell you what, Wesley, I'm going to let you out. Oh, Wesley, calm down. No, calm down, Wesley. Settle down. You're okay. You just got doesn't like it when his tail is wet. Uh, I'll tell you what, Wesley, let me just reach in and, uh, and get you out of there. Oh, oh okay, settle down. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, oh, hey, hey, Wesley, calm down. No, stop that. Wesley, stop that. Calm down. I'm going to try petting him. If I pet him, sometimes he gets really calm. Wesley, settle down. Okay, he's kind of still now. Let me just pet him. Ow! No, he's, he's still angry. You know what? You're gonna you're gonna have to go in your habitat, Wesley. Come on! Ow! 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 Oh, he's got my ear. Stop that! Ow! Ow! My ear. Wesley, get in your habitat. Now stay there. No, just stay down, Wesley. Stay there. No, Wesley, stay in your habitat. Take that out. Bar boy, run. Cut that out. Eh? You know what? Uh, he's a little robust here. A little too anxious. Leslie, are you all right? Calm down, okay? You okay? You want to come up and say hi to everybody? I think he does. I think he calmed down a little. He's just going to come up and say hi to everybody. Okay, come up. Slow, careful. Leslie, careful. Come up. There he goes. What have you got? Got a card. It's not even supposed to have a card. Put that away. Okay, now you can get what? He doesn't want to play with the card. Playing pool. He's got a pool table down there. He's just not okay. What's the matter with what, what, what's wrong with your pool table? Missing some of the balls. Alright, let me see. Maybe I oh you know what? I think I, I took a couple of them out over here. Here, I've, I've got a couple of them over here. I've got uh, balls from your pool table. i got a blue one and a white one and a red one. Are these, uh, these what you're looking for? That's what he was looking for. Okay. Oh, well, would you like to do your color game? Oh, he will. He's good at this. I taught him his colors. He knows his colors really well. Uh, Wesley, bring up the red ball. Watch this. He, he knows his colors. He knows which one is red. He's going to come up. He's going to bring up the red ball. Bring up the red ball, Wesley. Have it. Get the red ball, Wesley. Come on. Oh, you still don't have a ball. Get, get the red ball. Just bring it up here, Wesley. Ah! Oh, that's, that's the blue ball. <laughs> Wesley, that's not the red ball. I got you red. Remember, I got you the red ball. Get the red ball. Yeah, I think he's got it now. Get the red ball. Ah! <laughs> the white ball. <laughs> Okay, all right, you want, what, what? Oh, he wants to do his letter. He's got a letter card in there. And you know what, let me, let me see if I've got some more letter cards. I'll just, I'll just let him uh, pick out a letter card, just like that. Okay, Wesley, uh, I've got all these letter cards for you. I know what, I'll let him pick out uh, his favorite letter, okay? Uh, 
Maybe you can find it. Can you uh, can you just stop me when I go through all the letters? They don't stop on a hard letter like a G or B or W or something. Just say stop somewhere on an easy letter. We'll see if you can get that. Right there? Okay, what did you stop me on? What is it? Okay, good. All right, that's it. That your, oh, that's his favorite letter. Right? He was looking for the Y before. Okay, Wesley. Wesley, can you do that? Can you get the Y? Get the, he's going to do it. He's going to get the Y and he's going to bring it up. Okay, here we go, Wesley. Bring up the Y. <laughs> All right, now just uh, just get the Y and bring it up. You like the Y, right? What? He said I forgot to shuffle the car. I, I it's kind of it's raining out. People don't want to stand in the rain, so they have to shuffle the. Cards. All right, have to shuffle the cards, or he won't do this. All right, go ahead. You can do that. You can, he's gonna shuffle the cards. All right, go ahead. Shuffle the cards, right You ready? Mix them all up. Okay, good. All right, now we got all the cards shut up. Let's see if we can do that. You stopped him at his favorite letter, at his Y. He's going to go to... What? He did it! He got it! He found the Y! Give Wesley a big hand! Nice job, Wesley. I hear in Ohio. That's why they call them Eastlake cans because they were probably made in Eastlake. Back to the middle of the Y again. And that hook. And one. Yes, like a W. That's why it's better to see it over here. You can see it better. Okay, that got loose. So we always got to keep it taut. That means a little tight. Okay, so we got to go like this. Hold an angle. And we go wrap around. I'm going to pull it a little bit. Oh, and it's Oh, snap. Oh, snap is right there. Okay, so. That, that's right. Okay, yes. So I'm going to pull it back. So we get a little more, we got a lot more room here, a lot more string than we thought we needed here. That, that I have to so Pull more. It's about right. So I'm nice and not. Can you hold the stick real tight? Hold it and pull it back. Okay, pull it back. And we're gonna tie this. Tight. You really need two people to do this, okay? I work as a team, okay? Now, I want you to do the real cool part. You're gonna go and twist this around. And you go this around and around and around multiple times. Not real hard, just real fast. More fast rather than hard. Just keep on twisting. Me and mommy help you. Real smooth. Yeah, there you go. Keep on going. Okay, will you hold that nice and tight for me? Nice and tight. Okay? Tilt it back a little bit. Hold it tight. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Okay. Keep on going. Now, one of you keep come on, on going. over here. You're almost there. Almost, you almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Keep on going. 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 So you take that off. Now, you're gonna help me there, so we're gonna do, watch this. You're gonna twist it. And when I twist, you don't wanna go twist it up here. You just wanna twist down here. Twist, keep on twisty like that. Can you do that for me? Can you keep on twisting? Keep on twisting, keep on twisting, pull tight. Keep on twisting, keep on twisting. Don't move your hand up the top. Just keep on twisting from that spot. Pull it tight, pull it tight. Pull it tight while you're doing it. Pull it tight while you're twisting. There you go. Keep on twisting. See, the more you move up, the more it's going to loose down here. So I want to keep a real good tip. Keep on there. There you go. That's really good. You're going to make it harder or something. A lot easier than it seems. A lot easier than you're making it. Okay? A lot of times we do stuff a little harder than you need to. I don't know what's going on. Hold on, Lydia. Wait, sister. Watch what Marcus is doing. 
was one I was Okay, and then tie the three together however way you want. And you got yourself a rope! Alright, let's go make your own. Alright, thank yourself. you. Keep bringing it. There it is. There's an adult. <laughs> There's an adult. What are we talking about today? We're talk, talking about tools and toys made from Ooh. bone. Oh. From deer bone. Oh. So this we got one tools is over here. To make holes and leather. Well, listen. And this one is a beaver tooth made to scrape wood. Just like the beaver is. These are deflushing tools. This looks like a hand. Take the flesh off. Yeah, it looks like a claw. Let's make a knife. This is my hand. Now, do you ever break off any pieces that you actually reuse and say, hey, that's good enough for another smaller? Oh, yeah, sure. Some of the larger pieces to make nice small arrow points. Now, what are you looking for? Grain or something? No, there's no grain. That's what you want. Grain, it would break. With the grain, it wouldn't break where I wanted it to break. Old, but just old, skill. So I'm looking for leather. Imagining a center line, and I want to be below the center line. If I was above the center line, I'd only take small flakes, but this way I can take long flakes. I want a ridge. Energy will travel along a ridge a lot further than it would in an open area. So I want to set up a spot that's below an imaginary center line along a ridge. And then I'm going to press it against my leg, use that to keep the energy focused. These really now how long have you been doing toys? this? About an hour and a half. No, I mean... <laughs> the same toy. Okay, I fell for that one. <laughs> yeah, thank you though, I appreciate it. Now see, I hit that one around. Um, I've been doing it for like 20 years. But real seriously, for maybe five or so. It's a flint from Oklahoma. The black, all the black one is a kind of obsidian. It's called the day site. It, uh, this is mostly what you think of obsidian and glass and stuff. This cooled really fast and didn't leave any crystals. This stuff cooled a little slower, so it's more like a rock instead of glass. This is really difficult to work. It's very finicky and, 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 and chips when you don't want it to. So this stuff has a little more tooth to it. It's learned with copper. I have more luck with copper, so I stick with the copper. It's not accurate. If I was going to do a, a, an accurate replica of something, I would switch to the uh, to the antler because this copper will leave a trace on the edge. So actually, some people got taken. They uh, somebody made some spear points. Told them they were. 10,000 year old original artifacts. The guy took them into a lab and looked at it under a microscope and he could see traces of the copper on it and that was not used by those people. So, so again, I got a low spot, I got a somewhat of a ridge. I'm going to dull that a little bit to give me a, a stronger area to hit it. Some wor we had some worries. 
for a while there, it was like, we don't damage the bees. It's the, it's the, All right, you can turn the wheel if you like, but we're not going to have people the, put the apples uh, in just because there's a lake there. The mascot of Brexville is the bee, so we don't. Hard boiled eggs, butter, salt, pepper, mace, white wine, and a puff paste. It's not, it's it's not plain pie dough. It's puff paste. Puff paste. And it's an onion pie. Yep. Never heard of an onion pie. Yeah, it's delicious. The weapon in the fully cocked position. When I say take aim, I want you to take aim to the extreme left. Then you take aim. Now, when they pull that, when I say, I'm not saying it, don't do it yet. When I say, they'll pull that, they'll pull the trigger, the cock will fly forward. It'll, the flint will strike the steel. They're not loaded yet, so don't worry about it. Anyway, the, the sparks drop into that powder in the pan. That powder burns through into the main powder charge and out goes the ball. About 15 to 20 seconds of practice musket man to do. So let's, let's just make ready, take aim, fire. Oh, that's okay. They didn't hold your ears yet. They're not even going to shoot this direction. Bill, when we're loaded with shoulders, we're going to wheel around. Okay. Muzzle. These are just powder. No, no, they don't like us. By the way, most of us do shoot live. Not as competitive as we still shoot. So, um, the range on these muskets, these are all British muskets. We would call them, the nickname for them became Brown Jack. The actual name of, of them is the second model short land pattern musket. Uh, the platoon will wheel to the right, slow, mark. Yeah, that's pretty bad when it's hard. To the left, fake. Top five steps, man. Mark. Paul. To the right, fake. Now, if you have to be standing in front of those soldiers, that would be the wrong place. 
That's okay. I, I knew you didn't know that. Uh, two steps in the front. Hey, Dave. Next, ready. targets. And of course, that's when your targets really start hitting you, too. Make ready. Take aim. Fire. Shoulder, fire lock. Yo, yo, what is that? Make ready. Take aim. Looks like the brown. Fire! Now, just to make sure that that's... Now, just for a demonstration, we, we actually like Bill. So, <laughs> if we had to fight Bill, it would really be sad for him. But, we got him 7 to 1. <laughs> anyway, so what happens? Order fire line. Here's another part that, that you may think is strange, but this is technology too. I'm Bill Morales is over When they started using these muskets, remember I said it takes 15 to 20 seconds to load them. So you know that a young man, Jethro, could probably cover 100 yards in way under 15 seconds if he had to, especially if he knew they were going to shoot at him again. So you need to be able to protect yourself if your musket's not loaded. Well, they decided that at the very beginning of muskets, they needed to protect themselves. So they came up with this idea called a bayonet. And a bayonet, at the time, was just a knife with a long tapered handle that you jammed into the barrel of your musket. Well, that worked to poke people with. But you couldn't load your musket because there was something sticking in the barrel. Somebody figured out if we wrap the, the bayonet around the muzzle, then we could load and fire and still have our bayonets on. And these are called socket bayonets. And there are still military weapons that are used today that have them. Shoulder your fire light. I'll get you to step back a little bit. We're not going to Six bayonets. Shoulder, fire lock. Charge, bayonet. Push off. Now, this is what, at Bunker Hill, the British came up, hundreds of men across, and three or four ranks deep. And the men at the top of Bunker Hill, we all know that was really Breed's Hill, but, but uh, you know the battle that I'm talking about. The men at the top of the hill, were guys who had just, they were farmers They're and hunters. To kill you. I hope not, because I'm driving home. Anyway, the men on the top of that, that hill were farmers. They only had their hunting weapons with them. And for you hunters, you know that you can't put, there's no shotguns today do you put bayonets on the end, because the, the game never counterattacks. Anyway, so this is the bayonet. And, and the British used them in the first couple of years of the war to, to get the, the Americans to run away. Most of the British, contrary to what everyone thinks about them being bloodthirsty, were really happy when the Americans ran away instead of staying to fight. That, I mean, yeah. Shoulder, fire lock. Any questions? Show your fire lock. For anybody who didn't hear earlier when I was talking about the cannons, these are called three pounders. One of them is made out of bronze. That's the yellowish colored gun or the gold colored one. And this one closest to us is made out of iron. The the bronze gun, they were favored by the by the 
they were the the bronze guns were favored by the men who had to use them because they were a lot lighter the bronze guns weighed about 300 pounds the barrels the iron barrel weighs about 450 pounds so it's a it's a lot heavier to move around they're get they're putting their gloves on now uh, so that if something would go wrong in those those rods those tools that they're using would get shot out of their hands they would have their gloves on to pr help protect their hands mike would you see what he's got right in here his the tool there the top end that's made out of that's that's a sponge it's it's wool what's wool a sheep's yeah it comes from a sheep it's part of their it's part of their skin and it's wool and it's going to be wet and he'll use that to put out any fires that would be in this barrel after they shoot because if you're getting ready to load again you don't want something hot still down in there and the other end of the, the tool he has that's the rammer that's what you use to push the new gunpowder and ball down the barrel okay? Uh, Doug, you got the you got a wad hook. Well, that maybe one fell off somewhere. Yeah. Did you raise? You see that thing right pocket. there? That's called that's called Is a wad really hook, and that's used to reach down the barrel and try to try to grab a hold of anything that's down there that doesn't belong. All right. Thank you. Taurus, hang your bet. Get it back to him. Now, that man is putting his. There's a vent hole right here. See that hole? Sure, Everybody sure. can see that hole? Yeah. I can. What he's doing is he's putting a brush down in there and cleaning it out. Then he's going to put his thumb over that. That's so that air can't go through it to fan a flame. Next thing they're doing is cleaning the gun. They're going to sponge it with that, with that wool. Remember I showed you how they shoved that lamb's wool thing down there? And he's searching the piece with that corkscrew, the, the wad hook thing. And we're going to do that twice because they didn't do it twice, but we do it twice because that's our safety procedure. Now, these men are bringing the powder and the round up from the box. Why is he a kid? Well... He's probably the son of one of those men. Now there, see, hey Doug, she'll hold it up, please. That's the cartridge. That's just the gunpowder. Look at the cannon and cover your ears. I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. It, it, it'll be loud, but it's gonna be loud, Rosie. Yeah, it'll be louder than the musket. Cover your ears. Now, see that man rammed it. He loaded it. He rammed it down. He's gonna shove that same man here that covered it is now going to shove like a long nail down in there made out of brass and it's going to punch a hole in that cartridge bag then he's going to put a quill the end of a feather down in there that's full of gunpowder I have a question yes Now, now's the time if you want to plug your ears. This would be the time. Plug your ears. You thought it was going to be louder, didn't you? Rosie, <laughs> By the way, this is pretty normal on a damp day like this. What? Yeah, no, then we're not going to shoot them at the same time. We're going to shoot one and then the next one. But we're going to do it a couple times. 
And then I want you to look at these cannons, because you know what? You, what grade are you in cannon? Ready? Ready, guys? All right, cover your ears. 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 Pretty cool, huh? I need one of those in my front yard. <laughs> the range on these two guns is about 1,200 yards. Yeah, I see. Did somebody say fire in the hole? No. They used to yell that in mining. They don't yell that on the battlefield. When they say fire, yeah. I construction yell jobs it. and stuff. You don't fire in the hole. Yeah, no. Nah. I saw that some happened. Fire. That started happening with mountain men reenactors. No, fire. Hey, there we go. Ah! You want me to do it again? Yeah, one more time. Well, that. Oh. I didn't expect to be. Oh my crap. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> now, you might want to put in a piece of wadding, just anything to hold that cannonball in tight, and then you ram it all down in. It's got to be tight. So I'm going to put this back just to keep the water from going down. Anyway, the next thing you do is come back here and take out a, a, a brass punch. And you use brass so that, you know, brass doesn't make sparks. You, you shove up that brass punch down in that vent because the powder bag is in there. So you're piercing the powder bag. And then you take a quill, the end of a feather, that is full of gunpowder, and you shove that quill in there. Because now what you have is a line of gunpowder going down here into the main powder trucks. Then all you have to do is take, and we don't have them here, or they're over there trying to stay dry. You take a lint stock, it's got a piece of burning fuse in it, and you touch that burning fuse to this quill. The gunpowder in the quill catches fire, it burns down into the main powder charge, that sets off the main powder charge, and out goes the ball. About 1,200 yards.